how to handle Shopify refunds and returns. Hey guys, welcome back. In this beginner's tutorial, I'll show you guys how you can enable returns and refunds in your Shopify store and how you should be handling them. So let's get into it. Now, the first thing you have to do is head on over to your Shopify store. Once you open up your Shopify store, in your dashboard, you're going to click on settings on the bottom left. Once you click on your settings on the bottom left, you want to scroll down over here and on the second last menu item on the left, you will find your policies. Now, a lot of people have their returns rules not set or they have just returns turned off, but I have turned on my returns and we have the return info over here. Then below that, you have your written refund and return policy. Now, over here, you can copy this template or you can even ask ChatGBT to write you your refund and return policy. Just provide the basic pointers that you have. So, over here, we accept returns for eligible items. Then, your item must be in, you know, this condition, damaged items, and then refunds. Now, you guys can see that I have listed that we don't offer cash refunds. So, let's say I do offer cash refunds so I can, you know, alter my policy and I'll show you guys how to provide refunds as well. But you guys can see I have added a no refund policy. Only store credit would be added to their account. So in this way, the first and most essential part of being able to hand Shopify returns and refunds is having a actual policy. The reason for that is you never know what kind of customer you might get. And when you have those kinds of customers, you need to be safe on your end and have a customer know that your policies were listed when they were purchasing and it is on their own accord that they accepted those terms. Now in your return rules on the top, you can click on manage over here and then choose the managing options. So how long after they purchase a product, they should be able to return it. Then who is going to pay the return cost? So the customer is going to you know, pay the return cost. Then you can also charge a restocking fee. So let's say I want to charge a 1% or 2% restocking fee. I can add that as well, but I'm not going to add that. And then you can add final sale items. These would be items that returns or exchanges would not be valid on. You can click on save over here just so your default rules have been set and then your return policies are going to reflect the same thing as well now after you've added your policies and you still have a customer that is messaging you hey i want a refund or i want to return an item how do you proceed with that well the first thing is that you go into orders in your top left you have your orders and you will see your orders over here so let's take this order like so now, this is an order that has been fulfilled. Okay, I sent it to the customer, it got delivered, whatever. But if the customer now wants to refund this, you will see on the top right, you have the options of returning or refunding a product. So let's say the product I sent them was damaged and I offered them a full refund in cash. Then I can click on refund over here and then you're going to enter your refund amount. So let's say this is going to be $100. $99. Currently, you guys can see I have my refund amount added over here. Now, you guys can see refund amount on the right side. I'm going to refund $99 like this. And you guys can see you have your available for refund amount, which is going to be the amount that you can refund to your customers. And then you can proceed with refund over here. Now, you guys will see that, let's say I want to refund one dollar just to show you guys an example now what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna click on refund over here and once you do that this will be refunded from your personal account now you will see this is partially refunded and you will also see the customer information the overall information you will have the flat payment as well you will have the original order amount you will have the refund amount the net payment that the people gave you and you guys can see you will have a refund notification that will be sent to that person. Now, keep in mind that these refunds proceed with the method that people paid with. So this order was a cash on delivery order. So I would have to ship them the refund amount. This is not recommended, obviously. So if you ever have a customer that has a cash on delivery order and they ask for a refund, it's always best that you ask for their bank information before you refund their item. Then you can just manually add that the item was refunded. 
Now, what happens if you're not looking to refund an item, but instead looking to return it? So let's say I mark this as paid over here. Now, after I do this, let's say an item is, you know, not fulfilling their expectations and they want to return it. Well, in that situation, you're going to open up that item and click on return on the top right. Once you do that, you have two options. You can also build self-serve returns where customers can get their return requests from their account without having to mail or call you. And this can be helpful for larger corporations, but sometimes it can be a bit difficult to manage this with a smaller business because you don't want people to feel like, you know, the return option is always open. So having a mail option is always better. So let's say someone mailed me that they want to return this tote. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload the return label. And, you know, I'm just going to add a random image. Let's say this was the return label like this. And whatever is, you know, the return label that they sent me and then the tracking number and the carrier. And you can maybe even add no shipping required like this. And let's say it's one item and then we can return it to the actual supplier, which is gelato in this particular situation. Now, if this is your own item that you are getting returned, so let's say this is going to be a return over here. If it's no shipping required, it's going to show you the quantity and then the reason. Let's say the size was damaged or defective. Then you're going to click on create return on the top right and then you'll have your return in progress. Now, once an item has been delivered to you, so once you receive the item that the customer wanted to return, then you're going to click on refund over here and then the refund process can begin where you can refund the customer their entire amount. Now, in this way, you can get started with handling Shopify refunds and returns. It's not that difficult if you have a strong policy in place already. However, if you don't have a strong policy in place, people are going to be very prone to just milking out your business, especially when people see a smaller business for some reason. People feel entitled as they could ask for anything from your business. So always, always list your policy. And whenever you build your store, so this is our store over here. This is just a sample store but if you scroll to the down you will see all of your policies should be listed make sure your policies are visually there visually present in your footer your footer should always always have your refund policies listed so people can never say that they did not have access to knowing all of your terms and policies so i hope you guys found this video helpful if you did enjoy this video, make sure to leave a thumbs up and if you have anything to share with me or if I left something out, then leave that in the comment box down below. I would love to know what you guys have to say and I will catch you guys in the next video.